Beacon has just introduced a huge new update to its app. It's got a couple of game changers in it. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley, aka Miss Cast Joe. We don't say that enough. I kind of just abandoned my whole name, which is weird, but I mean, like, it's even on my card. I got a cards made because I'm going to do a, a thing this week. As always, if you ever want to come and find me and talk to me about any of these things, you can find me at any of my socials down below, or you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash miscastjoe when I am streaming. Make sure to follow me so you get notified. When I'm there. But let's talk about Beacon. It's been a little while since my barrage of Beacon videos. I've been one of the beta testers for their new software for a while, and I've been testing some of the things in this update prior to it being released to the public. But now that it is out, let us talk about what is actually there. So the update is for Beacon app 1.0.177. You can go on their Discord and actually see the entire list. Uh, there's a lot of bug fixes, things like that, that they worked on. But I want to talk about the main two things that they've done. And the first thing that they've done is they've updated the way that you're actually able to mute on your Beacon Mix Create. But essentially, each channel at the bottom has a little mute button that you can set to any number of mute modes. So you can mute it to yourself, you can mute it to the audience, you can mute it to chat, you can mute it to everything. But now they've made it so you'll actually have two different ways to mute each individual channel. So you'll still be able to select what the bottom button is going to do, but the button above it, your knob, if you press it in, will automatically be a mute to all. Okay, so if we go into the software, we're going to see a few things right off the bat. I'm going to hold off the big one for just another second, because I'm going to point out something that I I just love that they did. Up here, these were all really dark gray before, and they were hard to see on your screen. So they've changed the color. It's a teeny update to be certain, but I really appreciated it. But now let's get to the big one. And that's this VOD track, baby. So what this is for people who don't know, Twitch is actually capable of taking on a separate VOD track that removes music and stuff like that for clips and for anybody who's just not watching the stream live. So typically what you're going to see is you're actually going to see it set up like this. This is going to be the default when you open it up. The idea is keeping the music out of there. Now the VOD track on Twitch was built to protect people people from DMCA takedowns. Now those things can still occur. If you're streaming without DMCA safe music, you are going to fall into this problem just by your stream existing. However, this is protection for your VODs so they can remain because none of that music exists on the VOD itself. My suggestion is always use DMCA safe music because I don't really want to go back and watch somebody stream and kind of lose that element. The music, when it's missing, you notice. Now you'll see how I actually had it set up. I actually had chat and system removed. That was mainly because every now and again when I stream uh, just my computer will throw out different warnings and things like that and I didn't want any notification noise to kind of jumble up the clips that I was trying to make. The only reason the chat's muted just so you know it's just because I was messing around with the features and I, I haven't actually had this in play. I haven't been doing any games with Discord chat but this setup as it would be sent out on the Twitch VOD track would show your mic, your game audio, and browser audio. So that's a great way to keep your VOD safe on Twitch. Now let's actually go in and set it up in OBS. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into the settings and then we're going to go under audio. So we're going to pick one of these audio devices here. I'm going to pick the fourth one. I just like to keep things like this down in a way. So I'm going to select mic four here and I'm going to go all the way down and find the VOD track for Beacon Mix Create. And I'm going to select it and click apply. Okay, now that we got the VOD track set up, we have to make sure that the VOD track is on a separate audio channel than the actual Beacon Mix Create stream output. That's the whole point of this. So we're gonna click on the little gear here and we're gonna go into the advanced audio properties. And from here, so we're gonna find our source. I do name my sources, but for purposes of this, we're just gonna leave it as is. So that's this one down here. And you can see it's actually selected on every single track. So we don't want that. We want it to only be on one track. So I'm actually gonna move it all the way to track six. You could make a track two or whatever, but I. I have a lot of different sources that I put in different places. So what I'm going to do is this is as simple as that. And now this is only going to channel six. So this is going to the Twitch stream mix, which is channel one, which is going to have everything that I have on here except this. And then I also have it on channel two just to keep it separate for editing purposes. Now what we need to do is go back into the settings. We go to output and then right here we have two things. So for streaming, we have our audio track and our Twitch VOD track. Now the audio track is set to one, meaning everything that's assigned to channel one will go to your stream. But now we have the Twitch VOD track as well, where if enabled, which it is, you can see the little check mark there. You can't check it on and off when you're recording, which I'm currently doing. So you'd obviously do this before you started recording your streaming, but that's neither here nor there. Then you would select your channel of choice. So you can see I actually have channel six already selected here as well, meaning that Twitch is going to read what I've assigned to channel six as my VOD track, which it is. Then all of that is all safe. 
So we're good to go. And to show the difference in functionality between the Beacon Mix Create stream output and the VOD track, uh, so you have me talking so it looks fine, it looks the same on both, but let's add some music to that now. So now you can see that there's audio levels for the music, but not for the VOD track. But we can take this even one step further. Say you want to create clips for other platforms, and you don't want your music getting chopped up throughout the entire video because that is very distracting. You can now utilize the VOD track in post to remove the music completely and then add your own music on top of that. So let's have a quick look at what that looks like. Okay, so I'm in DaVinci Resolve. It'll work the same for all of them, but I've got a clip that I recorded earlier with the six tracks. So if I dump those in here, you can see a handsome gentleman up here, and then you can see the six tracks there. So if I drag this up here, we can see all six audio tracks right now. Audio channel one, like I said, this is the actual Twitch output. So this is actually going to be everything that kind of came together in OBS and went out to Twitch. This is going to be one single source. In this case, it was my Beacon Mix Create stream output. So these two should not be different at all, really, the way I have things set up. You could theoretically have additional things in OBS that wouldn't apply to this, but in my case, it doesn't. And then if you go all the way down here, you have channel six, and this is your VOD track. So in a scenario where I don't want to hear any of this other stuff, I only want to have my VOD track to make a clip, I can just right click, unlink, and then I can delete all of these other audio tracks, bring this one up, and now I have a single track set up with all of the sources that I didn't want not there. I hope this video has been educational. I hope it shows you a little bit more of what the Beacon Mix Create can do with this new update. If you enjoyed what you saw here, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and hit the subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I have more videos coming out. And if you want a more full look at what the Beacon products can do, you can check out the videos I made for them here. And until next time, gang, let's get to work.